Good Wednesday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of the forecast to give you an idea as to what's going on as we head into the rest of the peak of the week here in the Mid-South area. This is our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you've never joined us before, first of all, welcome to the show. Secondly, if you can't stick around for the whole thing, all you have to do is just check out the forecast in the red bar at the bottom of your screen. Or if you want to go for more information, including the seven-day forecast, drop by this website wreg.com slash weather and we'll give you the complete forecast and all sorts of other weather information as well in that website details to come on the forecast there and throughout the rest of the morning on news channel 3 through live at 9 if you'd like to give us an idea as to where you're checking in from we'd love to know more about your location just a city state will do nicely and country if you're checking in from outside the United States give us an idea as to what the weather's like in your location let's do some amateur meteorology this morning and give everybody a pretty good idea as to what's happening out there. You can catch up again with tons more weather information at WREG.com. Coming up in just a little bit, we've got a lot to talk about, including a look at the tropics, which fortunately are nowhere near active. If you've got weather pictures to share, now's the time to do it. All you have to do is drop them to me at my Facebook page or email them to me again at austin.onic at WREG.com. And we'll feature them on future newscasts and also on our netcast here so that everybody can see what you're seeing out there. Got some new ones from some of the storms that rolled through last night. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. We'll also see again what's going on with the wildfire danger here in the Mid-South area. Some pretty nasty conditions out west and we'll have more details coming up as to what's happening again with the hotter weather coming our way and that'll be coming up here in just a few minutes so stay tuned for more on that with News Channel 3. Rest of the day today, first day of August, not really feeling like August should be for this time of the year. We've got numbers back into the mid 80s throughout the rest of the day today so decently comfortable for this time of the year, not seeing a lot of major problems out there for right now. Uh, Linda Bell Hinshaw, count the dogs in August for the winter snow days. Uh, here's hoping you don't drop by the local uh, dog pound at any point in time. Thank you very much uh, for that idea. I'm not too sure if I've heard that one before, but thank you very much. Welcome to everybody checking in on Facebook for this morning. Rest of the day today, again, decently quiet again throughout the rest of the day and always remembering that it could always be worse. Our high temperature yesterday, 83 degrees, almost exactly where we said it would be, and the national high temperature, 120 degrees, which is actually nearly 10 degrees cooler than what it was about a week ago for Death Valley, California. So picking up some even nicer conditions out into portions of southwest California and into the desert southwest. So numbers again out there a little bit more improved out and across the area for right now. Again, looking forward to our next change in season, fogs. Okay, thought that sounded a little bit odd there. Fogs in August. We'll be keeping track of that and giving you an idea as to how the that turns up with wintertime fogs out there. So thank you very much for that one. 52 days and change until the changeover in seasons. The autumn equinox happens Saturday, September 22nd, 2018. Again, that's no guarantee of getting any cooler weather. That just means we're heading closer to that time of the year where we're going to get out of summer and into autumn. So for those of you who are not liking summertime, that's how much time we have left in the season change. For today, sunrise was at 6.09, sunset tonight at 8.03 continuing to lose daylight as we start seeing sunrise later and later and sunset earlier and earlier. So we're down to 13 hours, 54 minutes of daylight today and two less than that into tomorrow. Taking a quick look out west from Yosemite National Park, looking back toward Half Dome and a little hazy out there thanks to the nearby Ferguson fire. Now conditions are much improved. This is not as bad as the visibility was just about a week or so ago, but there's still a lot of fire danger going on out west. CBS News has a lot going on on CBS this morning about the fires out that direction. We're going to take a look at wildfire danger here in the Mid-South coming up in just a little bit. Oxford, Mississippi from the Ole Miss campus, Ventress Hall and the Student Union back toward the area through the trees just north of the Grove area, 68 degrees with calm winds in Oxford this morning. Rhodes College campus looking back toward the northwest and showing some decent amounts of sunshine this morning. Fog finally starting to burn off and the sunlight illuminating the eastern side of the buildings. Some of that fog and haze is still out there as you can see a reduced view of Memphis International Airport from our 240 and Airways camp. Now the good news is the clouds and the fog are not having any impact on travel, arrival and departure delays 15 minutes or less. 
So the green icon for this morning there. Likewise, across the continental U.S. for major and connecting airports, no delays showing up at this point in time. So again, things pretty quiet for uh, right now. Metropolitan Chicago, dense fog advisories this morning. Michael Wilson, thank you very much uh, for that one. Santa Rosa, New Mexico, Mike Burdett, thanks for checking in from out west. Uh, Bella Klein, the weather has been awesome. What's up with that? It's August. Uh, for me, that's called job security, but uh, we've had just a little bit different conditions out there for the uh, for this time of the year, so kind of welcome to be able to see that at this point in time. Rachel Kimmons, Blue Mountain, Mississippi, foggy this morning. Thank you very much for that weather report. And foggy in Holly Springs, Bessie Anderson, thank you very much uh, for that one. Bob Shuri, 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 Shuri. Something like that. Uh, apologies for slaughtering that name. Loving the weather also. Thank you very much uh, for checking in. Traffic along I-240 in Poplar. Moving along pretty well. So seeing a lot of sunlight out there. Still some construction stuff going on, but not enough to shut down the area at this time. So good news on that. Memfix 4 projects continue throughout the next several months. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. We'll update you on that. And also, again, more information at our website, WREG.com. Currently, visibility is much improved. Lowest visibility back down around Grenada, Mississippi. And that is a far cry from the fractions of a mile that we saw just a couple of hours ago. So looking much better with fog, but there is still some patchy fog out there for this morning. There is little, if anything, showing up in the way of rain. Currently, the showers and thunderstorms gone from the Mid-South on Storm Tracker 3S radar all the way back over into around portions of Middle Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee, Northern Georgia, and Northeastern Alabama picking up the lion's share of any rainfall for this morning, so seeing lots more improved condition there. Uh, Patsy Slaughter Cooper, 68 degrees in Oxford. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Erica Holcomb, beautiful in Germantown. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there for this morning. Celine Wade Massengill, loving the weather and a big thumbs up on that one. Thank you very much uh, for that and welcome to everybody else who's checking in from across the Mid-South and beyond for this morning. Keep the weather like this. Erica Holcomb, I'll love to give it a try, but I, I think somebody upstairs has different ideas about that. But as, as my assistant pastor back in Topeka, Kansas used to say, it's just a case of being in PR, not management, but good idea on that. Currently on WeatherNet 3, temperatures back into the mid to upper 60s. Very pleasant out there, and these are some of the warmest numbers that we've got so far across the area. We've had a few lower 60s this morning. Hopefully, again, going to be picking up a little bit more in the way of cooler weather into the next couple of days. We'll talk about that coming up here again in just a little bit. But as of right now, decently pleasant on the temperatures. You can get WeatherNet 3 information on your computer system. Go to WREG.com slash weather and click on the weather bug icon in the upper menu bar area. Through the rest of the day, should be seeing the clouds grudgingly move their way out of the picture before we get back into more sunshine. And then into the rest of the forecast, again, temperatures back into the lower to mid 80s later on today. Now that's still below the 90s where we could be for this time of the year, so no problem at all there. And through tomorrow morning, temperatures should wind up early in the lower 60s north of I-40 and the metro, mid to upper 60s throughout the rest of the Mid-South area, and rainfall chances are gone from the Mid-South right now. Mid to upper 80s for high temperatures today, and especially tomorrow, pushing 90 degrees with a sort of a cloud-sun mixture more than anything else. Now we're going to put the thunderstorm chances back into the forecast as we go toward Friday afternoon and evening. So if you have any outdoor plans, keep that in mind. I wouldn't cancel any plans, but keep in mind, again, if there's thunderstorms possible, you need to watch for lightning and listen for thunder and get back indoors to a sturdy building whenever lightning is around. Again, it's a big threat out there at this time of the year, very dangerous. And even though your odds, you may not think they're small, Again, lightning can strike very quickly, so you need to protect yourself and whoever else you're with by getting indoors. Remember when thunder roars, go indoors. It may sound like a silly catchphrase, but if it helps save people's lives, I'm all for it. Now into the weekend, we've got numbers increasing into the lower to mid-90s. This is closer to normal for this time of the year, so we're going to be getting back to August normals through the weekend. We're also going to keep a chance of showers and thunderstorms, minimal though they may be, some pop-up thunderstorms possible throughout the foreseeable future, and also seeing temperatures pushing the mid 90s by the early part of next week. Now, this is just the air temperatures right here. Combine that with the humidity out across the Mid-South, and we could be looking at heat index numbers returning to the possibility of seeing some heat advisory territory out there. 
that's something we're going to watch into the course of the next several days. So enjoy these temperatures while you can because we're back in the frying pan again as we head into early next week. Hopefully that changes, but right now it looks like that's a pretty good opportunity for some more heat coming on through. Very warm water in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and into the western Atlantic. This is where we usually see tropical storms form at this time of the year, but nothing is going on at this time. According to the National Hurricane Center, we're still not seeing anything develop. There is a small wave coming in from off the Sahel in western Africa. Now that might develop into something, but wind shear, winds at different levels going different speeds. There's a lot of it over the Caribbean and parts of the Atlantic. And if anything does try to move from Western Africa out into the Atlantic, it's a good possibility that those winds are going to do a very good job of tearing that system apart or just making certain it doesn't get any bigger. So for now, things are looking very good. Hopefully it stays that way. Keep it tuned to the National Hurricane Center and the News Channel 3 weather experts, and we'll keep you advised on that. Now, again, very dangerous situation out west. Numerous fire warnings in place, smoke and air pollution hazards out that direction. Here in the Mid-South, Lee County in Arkansas was the only county under a burn ban until right before last weekend. That got removed, so no counties in the viewing area are under burn bans right now. Hempstead County was removed from the burn ban list, so now only four counties in southwest Arkansas are under burn bans at this time, and that's the only ones throughout the entire natural state. Mississippi has no burn bans in effect. Tennessee does not issue burn bans except on a great need basis, as in a large and very well-sustained drought or a very dangerous fire situation. So right now, the Mid-South is clear of any real fire danger. Still can get some major fires developing through deadfall or unattended campfires and things of that nature, so got to be careful out there. And if you're heading out any place, even in Arkansas or throughout the rest of the country, check with the local authorities where it comes to anything involving fire to see if you can actually light that campfire. And if you can, please keep a very close eye on it because that could cause major problems a little bit later on. Louis Haskett, frequent contributor to our Weather Pictures program from Northeast Arkansas, a double rainbow as seen from Northeast Arkansas around the cornfields there. Memphian and violinist extraordinaire Jonathan Chu, often playing for the band Skillet, sending in a very nice picture of some of the storm passage last night from around the area of East Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you very much, Mr. Jonathan, uh, for that one in and around the area there. And Sherry B. Ware getting things started off in Salisbury, Tennessee, with a little bit of fog and some comfortable temperatures out there back into the mid-60s or so. Got weather pictures? Please send them in to me so we can feature them on our netcast just like this or on News Channel 3 on our newscast as well. Aonic underscore WREG3, Aonic no underscore necessary WREG3 on Instagram and also on my Facebook page as well if you'd like to check in there. Check in with my forecast coming up again throughout the next couple of hours on AM 730 with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. If you can't get the signal because you're out of town from the Mid-South, dial them up online for, again, www.talkbacklive.com. Org, if talkbacklivenetwork.org, actually into and around the area of there, if you'd like to check in with more sports chat with them through Monday through Friday morning at this point in time. Uh, Diane Mansfield, champion, Farmer's Almanac says for every day of fog in August there will be a day of snow. That's what you might think, uh, according to what they say doesn't always happen that direction. Matter of fact, more not than often. And we'll take a look at the last few years worth of fogs in August to determine the snowfall in and around the area for what that looks like coming up tomorrow. So stay tuned for more on that. Danren Sykes, odd how people beg for winter during summer and beg for summer during winter. Well, people just want the seasons that they want, I guess, pretty much right there. So as of right now, this is where we're looking at some fairly cool conditions for right now, so just enjoy it while you possibly can across much of the Mid-South. Thanks for watching Weather Overtime for this morning. We'll be doing more on our late edition coming up at about 1045 later on, where we'll take a look at weather where the troops are and give you an idea as to what it looks like around the world at various places where American soldiers, sailors, and service personnel are stationed. So please tune in for that. That'll be on my Facebook, Twitter, 
and Periscope pages coming up in about another three and a half hours, so stay tuned for more on that on News Channel 3's social media pages. Questions, concerns, anything you'd like to see on here or contact us about, austin.onic at wreg.com. would love to know what you think, and if you want to see something different on here, more satellites, more climate data, whatever it is, give me an idea as to what's happening. I'll pass that along to Tim Simpson, and we'll see if we can get it approved through our managers here at News Channel 3. Anything else, again, stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the morning into News Channel 3 at noon. And Tim Simpson and Jim Jaggers have your forecast starting on 1st at 4 and going through News Channel 3 at 10 later on tonight. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for tuning in for our early morning edition of our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. A lot more to come with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day on air and online. Thanks for joining us.